Well, states are taking a financial hit with attractions like national parks and museums shut down. Now some states are taking action. For instance, New York has reopened the Statue of Liberty, paying more than $60,000 a day to do it. Governor Andrew Cuomo says it's in, in the state's best interest to keep it open. Three million people visited Lady Liberty. They do it every year, in fact, pulling in about $200 million. Arizona is reopening the Grand Canyon for a week. The state getting federal approval to temporarily open the massive tourist attraction on its own dime. That's more than $650,000 a week, but some business owners worry it might be too late, saying many people already have canceled trips. Others may not plan one simply because they don't know if the park will still be open. And John, while states pick up the slack for several landmarks, thousands of our nation's bravest marched on Washington this weekend, demanding the monuments reopen for the people. Veterans tore down the barricades surrounding the World War II memorial and dumped them in front of the White House, calling on lawmakers to get their act together. These memorials belong to the people. They belong to the people that fought and died for them, that earned them with their blood, sweat, and tears. We have had enough. We're out here for a multitude of reasons, but but you you shutting down the Veterans Memorial um, was the straw that broke the camel's back. Peter Ducey was on the National Mall for yesterday's protest, and he joins us live now in Washington. I mean, you see the frustration there, Peter. What would you say got the crowd in Washington most fired up yesterday? Arthello, it was when those barricades came down first thing in the morning. When that happened, there was cheering and chanting and applause because one veteran reminded me that those memorials are where the living go to talk to the dead and that when the memorials are closed, they can't do that. Many of the veterans that showed up in D.C. were also really upset about the potential cuts to benefits that servicemen and women and their families had been promised and they arrived in large numbers because active duty troops aren't able to. There is no place to go past America. They shut these things down. And if the veterans are quiet, the last bastion of Americanism that this country has, this place goes to the ash heap of history. Do not let that happen. We need to watch out for the vets that have fallen, especially the ones that came back from Afghanistan. That really hit home. We're mad as hell that they would shut down our memorials for the for. When the barricades surrounding the World War II memorial were broken down, the park police just stood across the street and watched as veterans and others piled them high near the sidewalk. Some protesters then carried those barricades to the White House, while others headed up the mall to open up the nearby Lincoln Memorial. Arthel. Yeah, we do need to protect our veterans and symbolism as well. Peter, tell us about uh, some of the other protests that took place. Arthel, we've seen some photos on Twitter and Facebook of similar sized gatherings in South Carolina, Florida, Wisconsin, Washington State, Texas, and Pennsylvania at Gettysburg and another closed park, Valley Forge. I feel like this is like the Boston Tea Party all over again, but in Valley Forge Park. People uh, died and shed blood here hundreds of years ago to keep something like this. Now they want to keep, the government wants to keep everybody out. Organizers say veterans rallied yesterday in more than 60 locations coast to coast. We did see one man in D.C. get arrested for having a gun in his bag, but we don't know if he was connected in any way to the rally. Arthel? Peter Ducey, thanks so much for the report, Peter.